Hello, it's Salimi. In today's video, we're gonna be replacing front brake pad on this 2019 Toyota Camry, and we're also gonna discuss an even pad bearing problem and how to fix it. Before doing anything, make sure the wheels call to touch and the car on a flat level and parking brake is engaged. Let's block the rear wheels and loosen the lug nuts while the front wheel on the ground. You can use your car's jack, but make sure the car on a flat surface to prevent slipping the jack and place the wheel under the car for extra safety. But I will be using garage jack and jack stand. You don't need to have all these tools, I'm just doing that to show you better angles with the camera. So with the wheel being removed and placed under the car for extra safety, now we can safely work on the car. And here is the things we gonna need. A set of front brake pad of course. Make sure to get the original one so you don't have squeaking sand or brake failure when it heats up. We also gonna need a silicone grease. It's a high temperature grease and it won't damage rubber boots like conventional grease, brake cleaner or a carb cleaner, and any seas, which I will get to all that in details later. For the tools we gonna need a 40mm and a flat screwdriver, and no caliber piston tool needed, and I will show you how to push the caliber piston back for the new pass without a special tool. First thing we gonna do, steer the wheel to the side we are working on, so we can access the 40mm bolt easily. With a flat screwdriver, we gonna push the piston back before unbolting anything. You just have to put it between the rotor vents and pull it like this. This method is very easy, you don't need any special tool for doing that. It will free the caliper and it will give the extra space for the new pad. Next, let's grab the 14mm and undo the lower bolt. Sometimes the pin will spin, so you're gonna have to hold it with a 19mm and then remove the bolt. After removing the 14mm bolt, now we can lift the brake caliper. Here is the piston side brake pad, I can see an even wear on it, upper part is thinner than the lower part, but it's not that much. Just by looking at them, you will know this is the piston side brake pad, and this is the front side. We're gonna have to remove these plates and put them on the new ones. The uneven pad wear is pretty obvious, and the only reason this happened, the guide pins are not moving freely, or sometimes one of them is stuck. And that's why we need silicone grease for that. By putting the new and the old brake pad back to back, you can make sure that you have the same pad. I'm gonna quickly clean these backing plates with brake cleaner and then put them back on the new pads. For the backing plates, black one goes first and then the other one. And the spring will be on top of the pad. You're gonna have to do the same thing for the other side as well. And these springs will be on top of the pads. Next, we're gonna have to fix an even pad wearing problem. So for that, we're gonna have to clean these guide pins and then use silicone grease again. You basically have to wipe these guide pins from old grease and then put new silicone grease again. These guide pins has to be cleaned and silicone greased every time you change the brake pads. Alright, let's lift the caliper and do the same thing for the lower side. Cleaning and then applying silicone grease again. If you use conventional grease, not only it will thins out and comes out from the guide pins holes from the heat, but it will also damage the rubber boots and make them bigger. And when there is no rubber boots protection, water and dirt gets inside the guide pins and rust them. Most of the time you will need new guide pins or sometimes new caliber. Next I will be using anises for the brake pad contact places with the caliber slider groove. It will help easy sliding the pads, and it's one of the ways to prevent from having an even pad wearing problem. Let's apply anises for the other pad as well and then install them. You just need to put the pads in a slider groove with the metal part facing you and this spring on top. As you saw it, it doesn't need any force and now we can lower the caliper. If we didn't push the piston back before, the caliper wouldn't come down like this because now the pads are new and they are thicker than the old ones. That's why you need to push the piston back before installing new pads. And the best time to push the piston back before undoing any bolt just like I did before without using any special tool. Now we can put the 14mm bolt back and then tighten it down. You will need to hold the guide pin with 19mm and then tighten it down. Keep in mind that's the only bolt we removed for replacing brake pads, apart from wheel nuts. Next let's straighten the steering wheel. And I like to clean the rotor from any grease from my hand while working on the brake pads. And then I'll put the wheel back. One last thing to pay attention, it's important to hand screw the lug nuts to prevent from cross threading. So I did the same procedure for the front passenger side as well. 
And now we are done with replacing driver side and passenger side brake pads. But there is one more thing we have to do. So after jacking up the car and removing the jack stands and torque the lug nuts to the factory spec. It's important to brake few times to push the brake piston forward till there is no gap. Because we push the caliber piston back for the new pad and easy caliper lowering. First few brakes you'll feel the brake pedal goes down to the bottom and then no more going back to the bottom. Then you'll know you are done. And here are the products I use for replacing brake pad and fixing an even pad wearing problem. Hope you guys found the video useful and learned something new. If it was like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.